Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at this HP ProDesk 400 SFF Generation 1 desktop. This desktop computer was uh, a purchase from my girlfriend. Uh, she bought it for herself to be used as a uh, media center PC. She dropped it off at my place so I could uh, make a video about it. So that's what I'm going to do. I've set up the Hackintosh on this machine because that's basically the showcase of it here. It is running Mac OS Sierra version 10.12.4 uh, I think, or well, maybe I did 10.12.5. Yep, I did 10.12.5. This is the Core i3 configuration. This, this is the i3-4130, running at 3.4 GHz, dual-core with hyper-threading. Um, it's running on a 120 gig Samsung, no, it's, Samsung, uh, it's a Kingston V300 SSD. It also has a WD Black Drive that uh, contains Windows on it. We're not going to be looking at Windows at all. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM, originally came with 4. Uh, and then NVIDIA GeForce GT730, um, which was originally an HD 2500 Intel graphics that came on the motherboard, or on the CPU rather. So initially it was set up with the 8 gigs of RAM and the HD 2500 graphics, and uh, it was actually the easiest Hackintosh that I've ever done. So just for the people out there that want to know how to Hackintosh this machine, uh, it's actually very easy. You just need to go to the Tony Mac website and get Unibeast download it on your other Mac or another Hackintosh or virtual machine that you can use. As long as it's running uh, Snow Leopard or later, you can uh, make this work. As far as I know, at least. And uh, basically create your, your USB thumb drive, put it in the machine, boot it. You don't need any boot flags. It's just plain old booting. And uh, you can just install and then reboot. Um, of course, boot from USB stick again to get to the uh, uh, disk selection screen. Um, boot from the uh, internal drive, and then you're up and running basically. You just need to run MultiBeast, and uh, just need to do some things there. Let's go over those things. This is not really a tutorial video, but I just want to uh, uh, show you a couple things and uh, prove to you how easy it actually was. So, as soon as the operating system is up and running, you want to install drivers like you would in Windows. In this case, you're going to be installing Kexts, which are the macOS drivers. Kext is a kernel extension. So basically, um, once you've got MultiBeast up and running, you need to select uh, the boot mode that's appropriate to you. In this case, this machine can boot from UEFI mode, so we use UEFI boot mode, which will set a couple of parameters for you. For instance, we can automatically install the Clover bootloader in UEFI mode. We get fake SMC and a system definition which is needed to uh, basically um, tell macOS what kind of Mac this system is running on. This needs to be as close to your real system configuration as possible. The iMac 14.2 is as close as it gets. That's basically a Haswell Core i5. So that's what we need. And in drivers we basically don't need much. We can't use uh, the audio drivers that are built in, they won't work. Uh, I always install fake SMC plugins and hardware monitor so I can monitor my temperatures and voltages. Network is out of the box, it is real tech, and, but uh, you can always install this last kext here, which is what I did, and I'll, that will work just fine. The most important kext here is actually the USB driver. You need to install the 789 series USB support that will make all of the ports work on this machine. All of the USB 3 ports, all of the USB 2 ports, they'll work just fine. That's basically all you need to do. You don't need to touch any of this unless you have some uh, graphics card installed that's sort of uh, exotic or that fits the bill of the description here. Inject NVIDIA is used for GeForce 8000, 9000, 200 series, 400 series and the GT610 and 630. If you have a different card you need to use the NVIDIA web drivers. But in this case, this machine came with the Intel HD2500, so I will focus on that more. And then you just need to go to Build and Install to the uh, Install Drive. The only things that you have left after this are basically the sound drivers and the uh, Intel HD2500 graphics. In order to get the graphics working, you need a couple things. Uh, you need the fake PCI ID Intel HD graphics text and the fake PCI ID text here. I will put a link to everything you need in the description so you can find the information there. So that uh, should be easy enough to follow. You need to install these texts and you will also need to do a small edit in Clover Configurator. I will show you right now. Here's Clover Configurator. 
first you need to mount your EFI partition. In my case, it's already mounted. You need to click Mount Partition here. Then you can go back to the house icon to get to the home screen and open EFI Clover Config Plist. Then you need to go to Devices and inject this ID here. I will zoom in for you so you can see what's there. There we go. What you need to inject in the Intel Graphics section is 0x0412 8086. 8086 is the identifier for Intel, and, oh, and, and uh, 0412 is the identifier for the Haswell Integrated Graphics. I'll well, zoom back out there. That's basically all you need to do there. So if you have this kex edit or this uh, injection done, and you've got the kex installed, the fake PCI ID kexts, and that's enough to get your HD twenty five hundred running on this machine. In order to get audio running, you need to install the Voodoo HDA kex using uh, kex utility. You need to install the fake PCI ID kex as well through that method, and uh, the Voodoo HDA pref pane so you can control your uh, uh, internal volume. You can control the volume of anything else just fine, but you need to, in order to control what kind of volume goes through the chipset, you need to control it using the Voodoo HDA. So for those of you who are not familiar with installing Kex manually, you just need to use Kex Utility. I opened it right here. What you basically need to do is select all the Kex that you need, and then you can drag it on that window and drop it, and it will install. In my case, I've already installed these kecks, so I won't need to do this, but uh, that's basically everything that you need to do in order to get macOS running uh, on the HP ProDesk 400. That's really all it takes. So it's pretty easy to do. It's only after you've installed the operating system a matter of about, well, maybe 10-15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer if you're not familiar with it, but that's really all it takes, which is very nice. So, uh, after we've uh, taking a look at how things are done. Um, let's continue on and see what kind of performance you get from a machine like this. So this is Word performing very very nicely. It came up in just a matter of a couple of seconds and Word 2016, or the entire Office 2016 suite is pretty much bloated as all fuck. Pardon my French. But uh, that's just the way it is and that's how I feel about it. But uh, really it's very nice, very easy. It's very snappy. Everything works as intended. I mean, you can definitely uh, use this machine even on macOS for years to come, really. In fact, in, in terms of performance, just raw CPU performance and stuff like that, this machine um, Geekbench is around 70, or 7,000 to about 7,500. That's about the going rate for this CPU. Uh, to put it into perspective, um, Basically, an old Mac Pro, for instance, the quad-core Mac Pro 2006 and the eight-core Mac Pro 2007, they both bench a lot lower. This is around the level of the eight-core Mac Pro, which has three gigahertz Xeon quad-core CPUs in it, two of them. Uh, <laughs> that about compares to this Core i3, which only uses 55 watts, while those Xeons are 130 watts each. So, yeah. This is definitely the way to go. This, in terms of performance, uh, you would typically put this between a Mac Mini and a Mac Pro, but this is more Mac Pro level than it is Mac Mini. This is even, this is even faster than the fastest uh, 2014 Mac Mini that you can still buy from Apple new. And this thing has upgradeability, upgradeability going for it. It's not as thin, it's not as light, it's not as small. But it sits right in, in terms of form factor also right in between the Mac Pro and the Mac Mini. So yeah, so there's that. So that was Word. For instance, I also talked about hardware monitor, which is the utility I use to monitor the temperatures, which I've got open up there, just to get a look at that. As you can see, the CPU is idling right now about 30 degrees. The cooling in the system is definitely way overkill for an i3. Even if you put heavy loads on it, it really doesn't uh, run that hot. I've never seen it hit uh, over 50 anyway. Maybe what if you were going to game on the GT730 also kicking out its own heat. But uh, These machines were also delivered with i5s and i7s and I think they use the same coolers on those as well. Although they might be uh, Core i5 and Core i7s CPUs. But who knows, I'm not that knowledgeable about the HP uh, 
Pro desks. I've only used the i5 models at work for about six months. And those were the regular desktop ones, so I guess not. So there's not a whole of a, hell of a lot on this machine that I can show, but I'll just open up Final Cut Pro here for good measure. There's nothing in here. Again, this is not my machine. I just put a bunch of software on it to showcase some of the performance. But uh, that opened up very quickly. And uh, I reckon this could do some basic video, video editing even up to like, well, I think 1080p it could handle, but you just have to wait for a little bit for it to render. But I think it would be just fine. Of course, web browsing and stuff like that is just fine. It's, it's overall a very, very snappy system. And uh, if you're in the market for a, a small Mac, or if you just want to try out the Mac operating system, I really don't recommend going with an old one like a 2010 or 2009 or any Core 2 Duo Mac. Basically, what I would suggest is go for a Hackintosh. Get yourself a cheap, business-grade desktop. HP has many of these uh, pro desktops for with the Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge CPUs. They don't look the way these do, they look like your typical old HP pizza, pizza box style. But they can run Hackintosh like a champ, just as well as this one can. It just will have slightly older CPUs, so you will have to uh, do some more filling maybe to get it working. But HD 3000 graphics on the uh, and HD 4000 work just fine as well. So basically, uh, I would just get one of those. They typically go for about 100 to 150 bucks. These systems go for somewhere between, well, it's all over the place really, 150 to 250, depending on your configuration. Uh, but that's really all that you need in order to get your Mac up and running. So this will give you the experience like you would have an original Mac minus some creature comforts like iMessage and FaceTime. You can get them working, it just takes a little bit more knowledge to do. But if you just want to get a basic Mac experience, this is as good as it gets and only takes, well, uh, maybe about two hours of work if it's your first time to get the stick prepared and get everything running. But uh, that's basically all there is to it. I will definitely, I would definitely recommend getting one of these machines and uh, hackintoshing them. Uh, forget about Windows altogether. I think uh, Mac OS is very much suited to these machines. I mean, they're overall very quiet machines. They're very reliable, very, very cool running as well. And uh, they make really great Hackintoshes like you've just seen. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.